Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back to Reddit Talks Clash episode 5. We've been doing this for about 6 weeks now, which is super exciting. I've been blown away by the response to it. Uh, for those of you who are watching now, I hope that you're enjoying it. For everyone who's watching this later on in the form of a podcast, um, big thanks to supporting this content, to listening to it. We hope it's cool for you. And if you ever have any questions or suggestions, feel free to let us know. Uh, but if you're new to our podcast or if you're here live, this is Reddit Talks Clash using a new feature on the, the Reddit site where we can have a live talk. People can tune in live to listen to it and even down the road. Uh, can even call in and speak on it if they would like to. Um, but we are recording this live. We talk about Clash of Clans. We are the moderators for uh, the subreddit for Clash and uh, go through the top posts of the last two weeks, as well as some community news uh, pretty much every time. And we come out every Friday. I'm joined by Congressman Cool Man Rick. Spencer hey. Saris is our man in the back. Gingerbread Recon goes by Sam. And uh, hey. right here goes by Mac. Rick, how are you doing today? Ah, man, I've had a rough day, but we don't got to get into it. <laughs> Wait, real upbeat. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, uh, good, good clashing, I guess. I'm, I'm doing, doing well for Legends so far. There you go. Sam, what about you? How's your week been going? Uh, it's going, going all right. A lot less stressful than the week before, so that's been nice. Happy for it to be finally Saturday, or at least for me. Uh, and I guess more Clash related. Uh, I'm four days off completely maxing all my heroes, so I'm quite excited about that for the first time. Uh, so yeah, feeling feeling pretty good. Sam's going to be a man. I know. Mac, what have you been up to lately? Good day. Bad at Clash. You know, one star and a three star. What are you going to do? <laughs> oh, man. I've been doing well. I'm not at the racetrack this time. So that's nice. <laughs> Be a bit more peace and quiet. Um, but yeah, trying to think of what's new for me. Just kind of the same old, uh, especially in game. I feel like I've been doing uh, Queen Walk Hydra until my eyes fall out. And it's mm -hmm. always a guaranteed high, high percent two star, but all about that triple. But either way, uh, not a lot has happened. Well, actually kind of a lot has happened in the last two weeks. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked a lot about um, everything that, that Supercell was doing in response to the Ukraine situation, uh, which is really neat. There was a little bit of follow-up to it. Uh, for anybody who's following along, or if you're watching this later on YouTube or in podcast form, the links will be in the descriptions. Uh, but you can look at the top comment of, of this and see the... Rick, remind me what it is. Is it the most upvoted non-humor post of all time in the sub? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I think it was. Yeah, we got a, a post that was pinned for a little while about how Supercell is going to pull out of Belarus and Russia. Uh, Spencer has that pinned in our comments, and uh, we can look along to it. I am, I'm trying to pull it up right now. I should have already had it up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, someone who's got it up, can you read it for everybody? Yeah, sure. So, um, kind of to add on to what you said earlier, not only is it the most upvoted non-humor post, it's also the eighth most upvoted post of all time, which, as you probably know, is very impressive for a non-humor post, as they usually get all the love for upvotes, but obviously this is huge news, so it got a lot of traction. But yeah, I'll read it out now. So, this is a statement from Supercell. Uh, in response to the ongoing war in Ukraine, Supercell has removed its games from app stores in Russia and Belarus. New downloads are halted and access for existing players will be suspended with the, with the next client updates. We stand with all people calling for peace. To play a small part in addressing the ongoing humanitarian crisis in Ukraine, we are donating 1 million euros to UNHCR and are matching donations up to 1 million euros here. And then leaves a link. Uh, so the second half of that, we kind of discussed quite a bit last time as that was previously announced. However, the removal of the app from Russian and Belarus, Belarusian app stores was not released. So we have not covered that yet. Yeah, so what do you think? Well, I mean, it's a big... Obviously, I think it's a big bummer for people who live in Russia and Belarus uh, because, obviously, I don't want to get too deep into the more news, war-related side of it. 
But I think there is a general consensus that obviously it isn't the Russian people's fault, and it is a shame that this is happening because, of course, you know it's it must be very difficult being a citizen there and just suddenly losing access to. Obviously, there are much greater things, greater problems, but I mean, compared to Clash of Clans, but it's just another thing added to the pile. Though I do, I've seen some speculation, especially from Bible alone. About the fact that it's most likely to do to the fact that they're just struggling to get payments through from Russia because obviously I'm sure a lot of you are aware they were banned from SWIFT, which is a major uh, payment uh, back end system. They yeah, they're very sanctioned at the moment. So while obviously Supercell has chosen to present this as a moral humanitarian decision. I am sure there are some business aspects to it, and if they were struggling to make money from the game in Russia anyway, it would make sense just to pull it and then stand by a moral message. Though I, I don't believe that was the only intention. I'm sure there were many good intentions as well. Intentions with this as well. It's just a possibility. Yeah, without putting on my tinfoil hat, it's pretty yeah. easy to see that. <laughs> Uh, like a lot of companies have been doing something similar. And I think there's definitely a financial incentive. The one thing that I will say for Supercell, because I tend to, to side with them as much as like a reasonable person would, oh, course, <laughs> but I like this, um, is that they are putting a million of their own dollars towards. Oh, yeah, effort. So they're clearly passionate about it. They're putting their money where their mouth is, even if that m- money is coming out of their marketing department. Um but yeah, I, there's definitely like a financial and humanitarian balance to it. Yeah, Rick, do you have any any further thoughts on it? I mean, I know you posted that yeah, guide uh, recently. <laughs> they wanna if if they wanna have that moral high ground and say, hey, we're gonna do it as part of part of the effort, similar to how sanctions are supposed to work, then why not? Uh, just like you said, but. I know uh, the post you mentioned I made uh, a couple of days ago was saying, hey, for if you are in Russia or Belarus or, or if you started your accounts there because we weren't exactly sure how it's all going to go down. But just upgrade your town hall would be my advice. Uh, upgrade your town hall, upgrade your lab, drop all your new buildings because as soon as you get banned, <clears throat> uh, you can't get back in the game. But there's a cool little feature that if you are – uh, if you stay logged out, if you're inactive for 90 days, the game starts automatically upgrading your stuff for you. And it works up to a year of absence from the game. Just if you ever can get back in, you might as well come back to some upgraded stuff. It's not going to be a ton of progress, but it's something. Uh, so, And then also demote everyone in your clan that you don't want to be a leader because after 90 days, again, they're going to move leader to someone else, to the next active co-leader or elder um, but yeah, there, there were also people on that thread saying that, that they are in Russia and that they can still play on the VPN. So also that might be an option. You might not need to rush your stuff too. Uh, and so it's, if you definitely, if you're close to hitting town hall 14, I'd just push the button anyway, just in case. Um, there's also nothing that would really indicate that this is a permanent decision and especially right. considering that it's financially related. Um, there's a, a, pretty high likelihood that the financial situation is temporary, even if it's like a short term or long term, but it will get resolved at some point. So if you are a Russian player, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't just think it's gone forever. uh, And hopefully that can get restored to you as soon as possible. Uh, Obviously pretty deep subject and a lot going on with that. We spent a lot of time two weeks ago talking about the overall situation. If you guys have any questions, especially if we have any uh, Russian players who are listening in tonight. If you want to ask any questions, we would love to hear that out and do our best in answering it. Um, but speaking of the update that came out today, there's a new scenery, uh, a new champion skin, uh, and we'll talk about both of those in a moment. But there is a, a link that is at the at the top that you can click on is a, a post that went up today, and spo- uh, it's a spoiler alert. So if you haven't already done this and you're listening to this as a recording, pause your video go into your game if you have the new scenery and zoom in on the bottom left-hand corner. And I'll pause for just a second to let you go ahead and do that. There's a cool Easter egg. It might take you a minute to find it. But I said the exact same thing to Mac earlier today. So if you guys pull up the uh, the next post, Mac, what do you think of the new scenery? Is there the possibility that Mac isn't here right now? Yeah. 
Mac? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Mac's we, we will circle back to Mac. Yeah, I guess so. Sam or Rick, what do you guys think of it? Uh, well, I personally haven't bought it yet, as since I received, as I talked about a bit last week or the week, uh, time before, um, I've realized how much multiple purchases stack up. Uh, so I've elected not to buy the scenery <laughs> because <laughs> I've realized how quickly, like a few quid, turns into hundreds of pounds. So I've yeah. learned my lesson slightly. Um, yeah, another shout out uh, to last to the last episode. Yeah, I <laughs> said I would do I, that. I've never looked up how much I spent. Yeah, you shouldn't. Um, <laughs> but since since that new enlightenment, I decided not to buy the scenery, though I do so, really want to because so Rick, you it, have it. It looks different, I, and I like it. I don't. I I tried to request my data, and they won't give it to me. Um, I think you about the scenery. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, that. Yeah, okay. yeah uh, no. Um, what? Uh, I know this. This this might be the first one I don't buy. Uh, same for the skin too. I do think it's the best uh, Royal Champ yeah. skin I've ever had so far. It is. It is pretty nice. All okay. the Royal Champ skins suck. Okay. Um, so th- 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 this one's good though. Circling back for just a second, the post that we have up right now is by Head Mushroom seventy six fifty nine, and it's the Easter egg that is oh. in the skin, and uh, this is the only scenery that has like a bona fide easter egg like this and i think it's freaking hilarious like the other the other skins have some cool things like you can see a pekka walk up to the to the room on like i think it's the haunted skin um i know the party scenery has a couple of things but this one if you look in the bottom left corner and you zoom in tell everyone you know that it's just tough to see and then they'll like get really close to their phone they'll be looking for whatever it is and then a little goblin head peeks out from the corner (laughs) and just like waves hi to you and then disappears (laughs) again and I think that's so funny. But even besides that, I think this is the best scenery that they put out by far. I, yeah, I, I do I agree like with it that. A lot. I think I like the I love the fact that it's sand for a start, and that's because of course we have had sceneries which obviously make the base look quite different, but they've never really modified the grass. I mean, there's a Halloween scenery which made it a bit darker, but it's still grass. Right. and the winter one. Uh, which... Oh yeah, but. Uh, you know, at its core, it's a new kind of environment, which is quite exciting. And I do like how they actually, they didn't just say leave the the grass tiles around the buildings with sands. They made it all blend in with the environment. I mean, sorry, grass. Uh, they made it all blend in with the environment. It looks really nice. Uh, I also saw on a post, um, I think it, I, I can't exactly find it right now, but I do remember someone pointed out that they do have the customary banana back hiding somewhere i believe yeah. it was in no i was gonna say that too. so the first uh the first five or oh, six yeah, that came out had a banana hidden in each one of them and then they came out with one and i looked at it for like an hour and i couldn't find it i <laughs> messaged some of the devs in the slack channel that were in with them to ask where it was and no one commented anything about the banana like i did it in front of like some community managers, some game developers, and then a bunch of content creators. And no one said anything about the bananas and why it wasn't there. Um, And so I thought that they were going away from it. But then in this one, part of why I think this is my favorite skin is that they're going back to the, I keep saying skin, scenery. Why Part of why it's my favorite is they're going back to the bananas. Yeah, it's just a cool little addition that makes, (laughs) it's nothing huge, but it kind of makes you smile when you see it. Yeah. Spencer uh, uh, put a link up to it. This one, this one didn't get as much attention as the Goblin Easter egg, which I guess is understandable because, you know, I guess nerds like us are the only people who get really excited about the banana. <laughs> um, but the link by Padre Dio is going to be in the description too. It's the uh, the dragon skull that has a little banana in it. And then there's also a fruit basket. I noticed this one first uh, at like the top end of the scenery in one of the villages. And it's got a yellow sliver that, you know, presumably is a banana. It's a little bit less clear. I I want to know, like I I want to hear your predictions for how long we're going to be seeing posts about the the goblin that pops up because oh, there's oh. still there's still at least two Pekka chasing butterfly posts a day. Yeah, um, and, I do wonder whether this will be less because less people buy the scenery. Yeah, uh, I can imagine a lot more people use Pekkas and will buy the scenery. But like, it's uh, gonna pop up for years on the side. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm I gonna mean, prove all of them. <laughs> <laughs> 
you're going to start posting them all yourself. Just yeah, <laughs> slowly I'll trickle keep... them in, see how long it takes for us to notice. Oh, yeah. So that's all about the scenery, which I think is a knockout for sure. 10 out of 10. Good job, Supercell. I'm a huge fan. What do you guys think of the skin? I have not bought that yet, so I don't know if I've seen like a good in-game model of it. I, I think it's the best champ skin, in my opinion, so far. I don't think it's... I don't think it's one of the best skins overall. And I know I have some different tastes when it comes to skins, but uh, I I do I do like it, and I think it's definitely the best champion skin. So I I might get it. I don't know. Yeah, the other champion skins are just okay. What all is yeah, out? Right? Just boring. Like, not a lot. There's uh the, like we we just got the rogue champ. Um, no, I think I that's know. that was this gold pass, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot I, mean, of I unlocked. Yeah. Like I would have yeah, unlocked it pass before. Within the last week. Uh, was it what's what's this gold pass? Oh, and you're no, thinking no. of the shadow champion. You're thinking of the shadow the champion. Before the okay. Surfer warden. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Rogue, okay. rogue champion was some other time. Yeah, and and then there's a there's a winter one. Uh, there's a jungle one. I think everyone gets the jungle one, don't they? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, maybe one more. I don't know. There's not a lot, but. Yeah. Yeah, the, gladi- the gladiator champion is is I'm looking at it now, and it's such a missed opportunity. It could be such a cool skin, but it feels like they put not enough effort <clears throat> in it, especially with the lightning bolt. Like that could have been at least glowing or something. I don't know. It just feels like they. I guess it's yeah. only a gold skin, but think- it feels like they could have added a little bit more. Oh no! I was gonna say I think most of the skins lately have been really good. Um. I think there's been a real good streak. I know I just said the the shadow champion or rogue champion or whatever it's called is is not great, but I know um, Darian mentioned uh, last week during that interview he did with McKenzie that they really only have one guy doing skins now. They pulled uh, most everyone who does art off to help work on the new feature and other stuff, and there's just one guy who does uh, who who does the skins now. And like overall, that. I think I think he's crushing it. So. Yeah. Uh, well, I was just going to say, for most of the ones that you buy, like, outside of the gold pass, it does seem like they have some, like, special effects, whether it's the king who has his sword on fire or something. And so, to Sam's point, I think it's reasonable, if anyone's looking at, like, a $7 purchase, that they would want some more lightning bolts coming out of it. But uh, I, that aside, I do think it's the best champion skin. I haven't bought it yet, but I'm positive that I'm going to before it times out. Yeah, you got nine more days to think about it. Yeah, yeah I'll that, see how long how it is. I, I'll, I'll keep updating this one, how long it is, like, cave in and buy it. Yeah, that's how I rate how good, like, a skin or a scenery is. Like, if I buy it immediately, I think it's a 10 out of 10. If I wait a few days, it's, like, a 7 or an 8. Uh, and if yeah. I buy it, like, the last day that it's available, it's, like, a 6. <laughs> like this the, this one leaked, too. Um, oh, yeah. They, there really hasn't been a lot of leaks lately, and this one did. And I know... At least me and Frank will know where it came from if you pay attention to it. Uh, so if someone, <laughs> someone is being naughty. Would you like to name a shame, or is that a bit far? No, 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 no. Uh, um, I, it's it's definitely out of it's definitely out of the NDA channel. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. So, so uh, Supercell's gonna be doing the rounds, checking everyone. They actually like all interviews. they take leaks very seriously. This is a little bit of a tangent, and so I'll I'll get us back on track afterwards. Let's go but for it. When they leaked um, the the original Royal Champion, like the release of it, and the Town Hall 14 assets, they leaked that like three or four days, uh, or Town Hall 13 assets. Sorry, they leaked that like three or four days before the actual. Uh, release videos of them and like a week before they were released themselves and I have never seen the Slack channel more upset like like Supercell goes hard when they see leaks and and I mean people paid for it I'm sure they were furious. I would say by hard do you mean they just make a they just you know throw all their toys out the pram or they actually take serious action I mean, I think I think it gets legal very quickly. They post a, a couple of things in like the public Slack, or not public, but the one that we're all a part of, to say like, if this was an accident, let us know immediately. And they also kind of knew that it wasn't an accident for those, um, but like it was stronger language than yeah. I've seen them use any other time. And uh, and then they got legal teams involved immediately. I'm sure. And then at that point, they don't want to put it in in any public space. Yeah, that 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 sounds about right. 
Um, but related to the scenery and the skin is a new challenge. Uh, I haven't actually tried it yet, so I'll throw this to, to Rick or Sam, but this is a really cool um, concept that they're doing. This is the second time, and they've had dozens of challenges. This is the second time that a content creator has actually hand designed the challenge. And last time it was Itsu, if I recall correctly, who's one yeah, of the best. Judo. Oh, it was Judo. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one minute subs. Yeah, the first one was Judo, and then this one was Galadon. Um, and uh, I know there's a difference between those two as content creators. Uh, either of you who, who have done both of them, did you notice a difference in the um, in the event bases that they put up? Or what do you think of, uh, of Galadons in general? So I have done the Galadon challenge, though I'll admit not off my own ingenuity. I just copied Itsu. Uh, because I do this all the challenge bases, except for one of them, I think where you could just spam everything. I do, like, really struggle to just come up with, like, plans for these weird bases. I don't know why, just my brain doesn't cope with it. But I think Itsu's base was the one which I did, not Itsu, I, you've got me confused now. I think Judo's base was the one which I did do without a video, cause you, because you could genuinely just spam everything. Galadons. I tried spamming everything from the bottom. It didn't work. Uh, I was very upset. But <laughs> uh, I followed Itsy's video and it was, you know, it was fine. Like, realistically, I, I think the challenges are cool, but I also never get very excited by them. It's like, I'm going to find a video on it. I'm going to get the reward. I'm not going to think about it again. So and I think it's definitely cool with, like, Judo having his one million subscribers celebrated through the game that's cool i'm definitely a fan of that but as per the actual playing experience i don't get a ton of student challenges but i know that's quite um quite a personal opinion as there are definitely people who love to try get a super fast time swag as many spells as they can swag as many troops as they can so i definitely see the appeal there it's just not for me i think it's super appealing to people who are far away from the end game like, if I'm a Town Hall 8 and I get to use a bunch of new troops that are, like, a higher level in an event, I think that'd be really cool. Um, and yeah, so... I w when I was Town Hall 12 and I got to use the RC for the first time, that was cool. I will admit that. Yeah, and so I think for, for people like us who are all Town Hall 14s pretty much maxed out, it's just using a, an army that's worse than the one that we normally use <laughs> on a base that's unrealistic. And, uh, and there are just no transferable skills to the rest of the game is part of why I, like you, I don't get super excited about the events, but but they're still pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad, I'm kind of glad Rick isn't here, because he'd probably go off for one about Canadan. Um <laughs> I'm not really sure, uh, and I have plenty of reasons to as well, but I know Rick is especially passionate about it. Um, I obviously understand why Judy got his base, has a 1 million, sub, 1 million subs. As far as I know, Gazan's channel is still pretty much dead in the toilet. So I guess they might just be going around the creators and serving, giving them an opportunity to make a base. I uh, mean, because as far as I know, there was no specific milestone they were celebrating with Gazan. Well, regardless of how many viewers he gets per video, which I, like that m matters a lot, but regardless of that, he's still head and shoulders above second place in terms of number of total subscribers. Like he's just blowing it out of the water there. And I know he has a really good relationship with Supercell. So I'm not surprised that he's one of their go-tos that they would use for things like this. But to your point, if there's someone like Judo or Itsu or, you know, a handful of other content creators, Carbon Fan even, that I think are a bit more strategically oriented, I do think I'd be more excited about their event. Because then it's me saying I can beat a base that Itsu built, even even though he's building it for people to beat. Uh, I still get to feel cool at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm just kind of going off a tangent here. If you if Supercell came to you and said, right, Frank, make a base, what would you do? Uh, like what uh, what kind of perks would I you would add? Make it. Are you kidding? That would be so cool. And like for them, I'm sure it's publicity and that's neat. They get posted in game like their name is for everyone to see. Really cool stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if they paid them. I don't think they did, but I wouldn't be surprised. Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Um, but if they ask me to and like everyone's like, Who, who's Frank? <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. 
<laughs> what what kind of things would you add to the base? Like, of course, yeah, Gandalf with his uh, uh, five uh, or so kings. Judo is about a million Inferno towers. Have you yeah. got any fun things you would do? I mean, of course, the Supercell often give you access to traps they don't usually have, like um, yeah. this kind I of shrinking one. I would work at backwards, and whatever I do, I would make sure that bats are the only way you could three star it. And I don't know if that's actually possible. <laughs> But that would be my strategy. Is like the only uh, way to do it is like fifteen bat spells, or maybe that's what you do. You give someone fifteen bat spells, and then you make a base where you have to drop them perfectly for it to actually take it out. That would be quite cool. Like if you, for example, there was a lot of point defenses, but there were a few splash defenses, and you had to perfectly cool. say place one group of bats to a certain side of a wizard tower to uh, tank it, and let the other groups of bats take it out. For, like for example, that that would be quite fun. I would actually kind so, of enjoy that. We've gotten way far off topic. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll jump back onto it. Uh, Spencer, if you can put the next link in the comments for everybody to see, uh, user Red Yards posted a sentiment that we see on the sub super often, but this time it was it was very well received. Got over three thousand upvotes, so a lot of people are agreeing with this. It actually has like a ninety-eight percent upvote rate, which is pretty impressive. Like usually, posts Ooh. are slightly more controversial than that, even when they're pretty popular. Um, but it's the uh, the concept that I'm sure we've all heard before, where this guy's asking for a give up surrender button in builder base, and he puts a screenshot of him getting a one star fifty-six percent attack with two and a half minutes left over. Versus a guy who had five seconds left over and got a one star 73%. So the other guy won. Um, and he's asking, can Clash add a give up or surrender button to Builder Base so that you don't have to, you know, waste those precious moments of your life? Sam, I'm sure you've heard this idea plenty of times before. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I've definitely heard it before. And honestly, I'm sure Supercell could think of a great reason why it shouldn't be added, but I can't. Uh, like, <laughs> I personally despised builder base like a few actually a few weeks ago i started playing it a little bit because um i was i'm basically max on it now so i thought do you want know oh i've got unlimited you know armies and i can just constantly go into attacks so I may as well give it a try i think i got to 5.2k trophies and so i hated it um but i don't really see a disadvantage to this because if you give up and surrender, say, early, and you actually end up, you would have ended up winning, well, that's your fault, and the other player still wins. But whereas if you know, like, you obviously see, say, you've just two-starred 51%, and you just see your opponent go over the 52% mark, you don't want to wait to see them finish the attack. And just by surrendering, it wouldn't force them to win the attack, per se, because, for example, there would be many reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. You could be doing a clan games challenge, to yeah. destroy walls to get percent so obviously you wouldn't want to end the battle for the other player but i if it just allows you personally to speed into the next match i can't really think of a reason why it shouldn't be added because it only benefits you it doesn't disadvantage other people it kind of sounds like a win-win is it i mean like maybe ego isn't the right word but then them adding a feature that just says, hey, we know you guys hate playing this more, so we'll let you shave a minute off. I don't think it's that, because it's not actually shaving <laughs> a minute off of their gameplay. If anything else, it's letting them get into the next attack faster, so they can play it more. And they do a lot of similar quality of life features, it feels like, for main base. Yeah, I mean, you could use the same argument for the hero life thing. Do they want you just sitting there, waiting... <laughs> For your hero to regen, or do they want you going to the next attack? Answer: They want you going to the next attack. So this doesn't seem like something that they would be completely opposed to. Yeah, I I think why I'm curious is I wonder how it would affect the other person attacking. Surely they would just be able to finish their attack unaffected and come back to it to see uh, that they won. But it'd be hilarious if you could hit surrender and it ended the other person's attack and it just gave him a win. <laughs> Sorry, I'm reading the top comment. Uh, on oh, what post. did they say? Uh, <laughs> they said, normally when I see someone doing the art strategy, I go take a piss and come back and hope for it's done. And then the next person does exactly the same. I make some coffee for, for, I make some 
go make some coffee for enjoyment and also helps me pee later on. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, you know? Got to make use of that time. I hate ending an attack because I often just do a drop ship minion spam. And then if I end the battle, everything fizzles out. I just see like this person has barely crept over 10% and is slowly pacing archers. I just don't play build a base for the rest of the day. That's that's me done. What, what what I don't get about the sneaky archer people is that it's it's not a winning strategy. Like how do people no, do not. it that long? You can't reason with them, Rick. That's what that's your problem. <laughs> so yeah. red yards, that's your problem. Uh, instead of surrendering, you need to go to the bathroom or make coffee or <laughs> one that leads to the other over and over throughout the day. <laughs> Um, our next post i'm actually super excited to talk about this one uh none of us talked about this in advance i don't think so let me know if you guys have even seen this one but it was uh maybe 10 11 days ago it's by forsaken air 4127 and it's a guy who made a bunch of clash of clans but real life it's an rtx version in unreal engine uh and he links his art station and it's one of the coolest posts i think i've ever seen on our sub um and there's not really a great way of describing this to all of our podcast listeners. So hopefully you can find a link to it uh, and really see it for yourself. But it looks like some of the pictures are more realistic than others. Others look like they might be from like Rome Total War, where it's still, you know, obviously computer generated. Others are like pretty realistic, um, not quite photographic, but very close. And it's just it's a, a base and you can see all these buildings. It's really cool artwork. One of my favorite posts I think I've ever seen on this sub. Uh, but have you guys seen that yet? What do you think? Yeah, so I did see it, I think, when it came out. I, I'm i 90% sure I was the one who put the high-quality flare there, if you if you can see that. Um, yeah, so I definitely remember seeing this when it came out. And what blew me away most is not only the uh, whole Unreal Engine uh, RTX, you know, good old Ray Trace, uh, RTX, for those who don't know, because obviously that's more of a PC thing, and as Clash of the Mobile game, I assume some might be unaware. RTX is basically the name for uh, NVIDIA, which is a large graphics card producer. It's their name for ray tracing uh, uh, capability, ex- essentially, which basically allows for uh, very realistic lighting, very nice shadows, very nice reflections, all of that jazz. So basically look, making it look realistic. Um, but what impressed me the most is the fact that they made all those models themselves. You know, I don't think, I'm sure there are a few 3D models out there of Clash Clans, but those are pretty high quality, and I can guarantee almost all those were made by the OP. And to put that kind, to have that kind of graphics design coupled with the Unreal Engine RTX, it just blows my mind how someone has that kind of skill. It's uh, for anyone who is just listening and can't watch or, or look at it, it looks like it's a Town Hall 7. It uh, looks like it's got an Inferno Tower, which is kind of funny. Level mm-hmm. three walls, I think, are the smooth, yeah. smooth stone ones. Um, and then, if Sam, if you look at the sixth picture, there are seven in the whole um, in the whole link. Do you know if yeah. this was pulled from RTX or if he made an actual rock? to look like the the rock that comes with the village, like the big boulder. Well, I, I should kind of write, RTX is not anything specific to Unreal Engine. It was originally... Oh. I mean, ray tracing has been a thing in films for decades, but it's, it was incredibly computer-intensive. Sorry for going off on a tight tangent. I'll try to keep it short. But uh, in the past, I think, f- like four years ago, three years ago, uh, NVIDIA released uh, ray tracing to consumer graphics cards. They could do it in real time. That was the appeal, is real-time ray tracing, whereas previously in films, you'd have to leave it going for like a day. And its first functionality, or its, uh, they were mainly marketing it as a thing for games, right? So you could enable RTX on games and have realistic ray tracing. So all this RTX is about the lighting. Uh, but as for Unreal Engine, I am not sure. I'm not too familiar with the software. Maybe there was a a rock 3D model available to him, or maybe he did create it. I wouldn't really be surprised either way. I do lean more towards the fact that maybe he did create it, which is the reason he's showing it off, but that is just pure speculation. Either way, it's super cool, and I want to throw this to Rick for a second, um, 
because I know when we first made the humor changes a long time ago, and we've talked about that a little bit uh, on, on here before is why the sub goes about humor the way that it does. Uh, but part of it was that we wanted to really highlight high quality content. And I know that's something that we're always going out of our way to do is to try and really encourage people to post unique and cool things. And I thought this was right down the alley of the type of content that I would like to see more of. Uh, but Rick, I'm not sure uh, if, if that was something that you thought too. Part of the appeal of Reddit, I think, is there's a huge variety of stuff, of stuff that goes on uh, and things that get posted. And previous, uh, before 2021, the, it was we were essentially just a meme sub. So that was one of our major goals was just giving space for other type of stuff to shine, like like people's artwork and like attack guides and everything else. I know most of last year, what I tried to do to encourage other high quality stuff was we did the uh, the monthly awards and those were okay. Um, we didn't get a whole lot of engagement back from those. I think they were pretty well received by about 20 people. <laughs> Uh, who, who who really appreciated it. Um, I, I tried doing some different stuff with it. We switched to uh, using a poll instead of just upvoting and downvoting different posts. And we, and then that went from, you know, uh, the, the winning posts before that were decided by 20, 15 to 20 votes. And then once, once we started using polls, we got into the hundreds. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was, you know, six, seven, 800 on the, on the top three, but, it just still didn't feel like we were really doing much or actually encouraging things. So the idea that came um, actually came from a user uh, was why don't we just start re reflaring things as high quality. And uh, I, I liked that a lot. I didn't like it at first. I, I didn't, I think I said no in the comments, like, no, nah, that's dumb. And then I gave it, I gave it a day and talked, talked over with you guys. And um, yeah, uh, so I know Sam's been doing a lot of it. I've been busy the last couple of weeks, but mm-hmm. I know on most all platforms that you browse on, you should be able to see the flare. Um, you can search by flares. You can, um, if you see one that's high quality, if you click on it, you click on where it says high quality, it will bring you to everything else flared like that. And it's going to be a, var- a variety of stuff, but it all should be. Including uh, one joke. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, it, it, it like, I don't want to say we're not going to highlight memes uh, as, as high quality stuff, but it, it needs to be a good. But meme. I know Rick won't. <laughs> oh God, I'm never highlighting. No, it's funny. High like, I know, like it, I was probably. One no, that's of the it. Most truly, out- is amazing. Like I was probably one of the most outspoken guys against like, hey, we need to shut down memes and, and this like the the, the the subs a trash hole. It's nothing but jokes and and stupid and everything. And if you go look at my post history for the last eight months, it's it's nothing but like the occasional mod business and 40 memes. That's funny. <laughs> but in case anyone was wondering, that's how we approach high quality posts and good job to um, forsaken air for making what I think is a super high quality post. Uh, we've got two more to talk about and then the user questions to get through. And it looks like we've got uh, a plenty of user questions. So if you still have one, uh, feel free to ask in the comments right now. And uh, Rick, Sam, and I will be happy to, to entertain those. We'll pick out as many as we have time for. Um, but we'll jump into uh, our second to last post to talk about. We don't have to spend a long time on this. I just think it's going to be really funny. Uh, one post that did really well the other day was um, the picture from uh, Tangled, where the guy's standing there smiling and has like 20 swords right at his throat. And it says, what Clash of Clans opinion would have you in, in this position? Um, and my computer's not loading it, but if you sort by top, you see, uh, you know, a handful of things that most people widely agree with. But if you sort by controversial, which is absolutely my preference, and Rick and Sam, think for a minute, because I'm going to ask you guys um, what yours would be, uh, <laughs> your controversial opinion. Okay. But uh, if you sort by controversial, the top one says Ice Golem is useless with only one comment that says this is the worst opinion I've ever heard, which I guess, <laughs> I guess fits the bar. Um, and then there were two others that I, I thought would be kind of fun uh, if we had any comments on. One said removing global was a good idea, and the other said clashes pay to win. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think of what my 
my uh, opinion would be, God, because like I get annoyed at people. But I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion or not. Rick, well, I just think Rick, do you have any any gripes? Oh, um, humor is bad for this. Uh, oh no, 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 no. Like um, like I've never said let's get rid of memes, but anyway, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my probably controversial opinion on this, uh, at least on the sub, is. Uh, I don't know. I think rushing is terrible advice for most players. Huh. So, um, cause I, man, sin, like you, you guys remember sin of dusk, that guy. Yeah. I think, uh, like, I, I don't want to swear cause I don't want to edit it later, but that guy, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think he did so much damage to, to the clash community with, with the way he went about trying to promoting rushing and rushing is really awesome. If you know what you're doing and if you have a grasp yeah. of the basic mechanics of the game and, and you have a goal in mind, then rushing is a thousand percent the way to go. And there's no arguing against it. But if you're going to tell a random dude who's just like, Hey, look at my base. I'm TH nine. What do you think I should do? And people just say rush. Like that's probably bad advice for that guy. Just yeah, it'd be interesting, like, it'd be interesting yeah. to have Davy on right now to be a nice counter argument for you. I, me, me and Davy's t- argued about this a lot, in, and and I know a lot of people out there uh, who are super pro rushing, and they're not wrong. I think pushing rushing on people with without context is 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 real bad. So, like it. I tell people all the time, I probably say it like twice a week is, but the game isn't like a race to the end. The It's not magically a better game at town hall 14, just because you have more toys. Um, and the people who do, who really, really rush to get there, I think often end up being some of the worst clan mates because uh, they don't know what they're doing. They're not able to, to hold their own weight in war. They don't know how to attack. They mostly just use E drags. Uh, or some other kind of spam, and they rarely three star, and like it's and because they raced through a lot of the stages of the game where you develop those fundamentals. Even spending you know a couple weeks at Town Hall Seven just to learn to, how to get the feel for dragons. Uh, I mean, like you have to learn how to cut a funnel at T Seven, or you kind of used to, yeah. but not anymore. Uh, no, it, and then Town Town Hall Eight and Nine is prime time to learn hogs. And then you see all these people who are Town Hall 12, Town Hall 13 saying, hey, I rushed to 12 or 13 and I don't know how to use hogs. And like, you should have been using hogs for the last year. I don't... <laughs> right. And like queen walking, you know. Yeah. Like, if you don't learn yeah. that at Town Hall 9 when it's going to be super easy to figure it out. It's going to be way harder at, at 12 and 13. Yeah. And then, so, yeah. Don't, go ahead and go. I'm, I'm just going to read forever. I think um, I on the surface disagreed. But after you explain it, I think I agree with you. I still think... Um, Kind of like what you're saying, strategic rush, not in the old definition of the word, but like if you know which town halls you're rushing through and when you're stopping to catch up which things, you know, I think that's great. Um, but that's why it's a controversial opinion. Like if you have two accounts, you should yeah, definitely if, rush your second account. Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, a thousand percent. If you if you were doing an alt, then... Wait, Mac? How are we doing? <laughs> well, well, <Mac. laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. I had some obligations I had to attend to. My wife is pregnant. Congratulations, me. I don't know hey. about you. I might have mentioned that last time. Oh, nice. But uh, yeah, had some unforeseen circumstances. Everything is good. Baby's asleep. We're having a good time. Perfect. Yeah. Glad you're okay. I was going to shout you out at the end of the episode in case you died. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> What's what, your what if virtual clash take? That's what we're talking about right now. Well, yeah, no, I've been listening in the whole time. I've missed a thing. But uh, got my little ear pod in here. You guys are doing great, by the way. Yeah. I think my hot take would be if you don't buy the gold pass, you can't complain about progression. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, it's controversial for a reason, I guess. I know. I'm just, uh, I'm just saying, right. you know, games made me uh, play from one account, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move on into our last post and then we'll start. Do you mind? The... Is, there, is there time oh, for yeah. me to slide in my opinion oh, yeah, before yeah, yeah. we. So, honestly, mine would be, if you can't be asked to watch a video, just leave it as a 10-minute video on a tax strategy you're using, it's just, 
you don't deserve to be good at the game because it is so incredibly hard to teach people how to win attack through uh, clan chat. And I'll just say to them, look, I can send you a video on Discord or you can look it up yourself, look up a video and it will make so much more sense. And there are clearly people who don't bother doing that. And it is so frustrating. And I know that there is the argument that if you're a more casual player, you won't be doing that. But it is so genuinely not hard to just look up a video and be a lot better at the game. And I don't know why people here's, don't do it. Okay, here's another one I'll get in real quick. But I don't think, I don't think any of the big YouTubers right now are particularly good at teaching attacks. It's, it's pretty good, I find. Yeah, yeah. it's just... It, it's, like, what, what everyone does is, like, hey, here are a bunch of attacks in Legends that I'm going to just, like, narrate what is happening instead of telling you what the thought process is and why they decided to do that and all this other stuff that I think you need to learn. Or maybe I'm just dumb. But so, like, I, I with you entirely. I think the one potential exception to that is judo but not at a max level judo is probably the best instructor on youtube that i can think of but a lot of what he does is fundamental concepts and that may be a thousand percent true i don't watch videos to learn at lower town hall levels because i'm already (laughs) awesome at lower town hall levels so (laughs) so that may be true but so I will amend my statement to anyone trying to teach you a Town Hall 14 attack. I have not yet found a good teacher. I think every time you get like a really good strategy guy that starts a YouTube channel, it's just like fire for a little while. And then you just have to like put up your daily hits after a while, you know? So the gems are there. Yeah. They're just you yeah. and far. It's hard to do. You can't do that as regular content. There's not a new attack every week, you know? Yeah. That's how uh, I remember I, l- I learned a lot of Lalo off one of Carbon Finn's guides. I think what was good about that was that he did half of the video just on, I think, like, paint or something, just with a generic, literally just with a circle and explaining the process, as in what you do for a blizzard, then where you'd want to put your suit in. Obviously, it's less applicable when there's no base there, but by not having a base there, he was forced to actually tell you what the steps were instead of just, Hmm. and explain why you were doing them, instead of just showing a base and explain I, what he was doing. So I, I I know that video that you're talking about. I and mean, he has a he has really a Town Hall 9 Lalo video. And now that I'm thinking Judo has an amazing funneling video, at least how to use your heroes yeah. to start. Um, and, and I link that one to people all the time. But now I'm kind of thinking maybe the problem is that they are pressured to put out constant content. And that kind of stuff probably takes a lot more time and a lot more effort than... Yeah. Here, oh, yeah. Here's some here's some replays I'm going to narrate. Well, and uh, Clash with Eric is probably the best example of that to me. I loved it when he first became a creator because he was a legitimate pro player who just made great educational videos. And then when he started to do it every day, and especially when he started to do it for a living, I don't blame him as much because he's found a niche in replaying pro wars and so he has like 30 40 minute videos where he watches every attack in a in a pro 5v5 and breaks them down and that's that's his thing it doesn't really help me learn an attack very well but anytime they start to do it on a daily basis yeah i think that's really what it is is they just need content but this is actually a really good segue into our last uh our last post to talk about so we can keep this exact conversation because what's pinned to the top of the sub right now is a discussion question for different people to ask and answer and figure things out it says how do you guys help teach attacks to other clan mates so sam it sounds like you send them a video and they're dead to you if they don't watch it well okay i'll rephrase that statement slightly i like okay let me try to phrase this it annoys me when people don't do that and i think they should just do it without me having to tell them but then if someone asks for help in clan chat, I always do it. Even though I know I may not make much progress, I just always still do it. I don't learn from my mistakes. Um, I mean, it often depends on the type of person as well, because people who already have a basic grasp of fundamentals like how to queen charge, how to funnel, how to use warbreakers effectively, etc., they're much easier to teach a new strategy because they, un- like, if you say, uh, funnel this part at uh, 
five o'clock, send your queen in there. They'll know they'll know to maybe take a few sneakies or a baby dragon or wizard. They'll know what to do there, and I don't have to baby step walk them through mm-hmm. everything. So it does definitely depend on the type of player, whereas if they don't know how to funnel, you just see them using the, the wackiest combinations of troops or just not funneling at all, and it just goes very wrong. But mm-hmm. generally teaching new clan members an attack, like I said, depends on the person. But fixing something small is very easy, and you've got to do it in a way that you don't sound like an absolute ass or just trying to get all in their face. But if you see someone make a small mistake in a war attack, point it out to them because there's a 50-50 chance they'll take it on board and they won't do it again. And that is quite a quick fix for something that may be costing you and them triples. Well, that's fantastic advice. But I'm telling you, I've got a formula that works. There's There's actually a really good answer here. And it's, it's worked over and over in our clan, but it's kind of hard to do. The first thing is you have to be kind of good, and you have to <laughs> share your points. Like 70% of Reddit is just like, well, I'm out. <laughs> right? But like if you, if you triple, you know, and you share your replays to clan chat, and you triple impressive basis, then it, it lights the clan on fire real quick. Yeah. I mean, Lion's seen it. Uh, we, he and I have done it over and over, uh, you know, intermittently, whoever's getting hot, you know. But if you share those, it's good for your clan activity and clan life too which also just boosts performance when everyone's playing more and they're more into it. And then on yeah. top of that, if you have a good strategy, they'll pick it up. Yeah, yeah so that, Matt, that is sorry. leading the same clan. And uh, and I noticed that a whole lot. Like, it's a top-down type of thing. Uh, to Sam's point, uh, and and we're in, like, an all-town Hall 14 clan. So to Sam's point, if someone's really struggling with the fundamentals, I think you send them a YouTube video, and if they're not willing to put in the bare minimum, then they don't want to learn more. And, you know, how do you help teach an attack to someone who doesn't want to learn it? You don't, you know, it's, it's their choice. But um, so much of it's about clan culture. And if you've got one guy who's on fire, it's almost a monkey see monkey do people are going to copy that attack. They're going to figure it out too. And then what we've always done is what Sam kind of mentioned is just small little tips after every attack. So I try to stay online during war day as much as possible. If I see someone hit, I'll watch it live. If there's something I would have done differently, I'll say something about it. And to be like, just to be flat, if someone doesn't like that, they can go in a different clan. (laughs) (laughs) There's a a different coaching style for everybody's preference. And uh, the one that, that Mac and I have for our clan is that like everybody has feedback on everyone's attack. You're constantly seeing what you could have done better. And that's the culture that, that that we've made. And it works for us pretty well. Yeah, I guess going back to the first point you made about sharing replays, that is one thing I find really irritating because um, I often have my heroes down almost exclusively all four except for Clan War League. But that is going to change soon. I'm so excited and so relieved. But it's really a pain when you're trying to teach someone an attack and you can't demonstrate it yourself. You know, I'm sitting there talking about Queen Charge Lalo, when I don't have a single hero to demonstrate anything to them. And as with why I say watch videos, a lot of learning attacks is through watching them. And I think that's why, for example, it's probably quite easy to coach in uh, in you guys' kind of centurions, because you can all just demonstrate it for people. Whereas in Senators, we have a lot of people upgrading heroes who can't just show an attack because they're not able to. Yeah, and I can speak to that point really quick because I was the leader for our clan when I was at Town Hall 9. Uh, and I I might have been Town Hall 10 when 12 was out, but I think I was Town Hall 9 when 12 was out for a little while. And I just watched YouTube videos for Town Halls 10, 11, and 12, even though it wasn't me. And so there's a way to be able to coach and work with people, even if you can't actually demonstrate it and show it. It is more difficult. And my biggest recommendation is that if you're in a clan of people who care about getting better and they just need some help getting better, I would get a Discord server because you can communicate so much more clearly through text, put videos up, have you know images. We have a channel in our Discord that's how would you attack? And people post their screenshot of the war base that they're going up against, say what their plan is, and they ping a role to ask for some advice on it. Um, and like that's pretty extreme. Other clans are more extreme. Like They require that for every single attack. Ours is just, just an option. 
Um, but if you're really hey, shout out to the r slash Clash of Clans Discord server real quick. If you're looking for a clan with a Discord server, they have channels for that. Oh, uh, yeah. True. Yeah. Um, so I would just recommend doing something like that out of game because there's only so much you can do when your text goes away every, you know, 24 hours, however often your clan chat rolls around. Yeah, watching YouTube videos was the only way I was able to coach a lot of people for the past year or so. Without it, you know, I would have no idea what the hell to do at Tower 14. But to be honest, I was probably more, when I was Tower 13 for a bit, I was probably more knowledgeable of Tower 14 attacks and Tower 13 just because most YouTube content is Tower 14. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it, at least for our posts. We've got a lot of questions that have come in, so I don't think we'll be able to address all of them. Um, But we'll we'll ask a few of them. If all of us have a thought, that's cool. If only one or two of us give a a brief answer, then maybe we can get through some more. Uh, But Sure Resident says, I just returned to Clash of Clans two days ago. What do you guys think of the new player uh, slash early game experience for new and returning players? And how much does it change when you start to get into the game, into late game? I think this question should be honestly directed at Rick because he just posted a guide recently on Lower Town Halls. So, take it away. Town Hall 1 to 7 is so fast. Um, what What uh, is the on that now? So, so um, okay, you'll max Town Hall 5 in, what did I say, Sam, a week or two weeks? Something probably, stupid like that, yeah. Probably, yeah, uh, you'll max Town Hall 6 in another, in another week from there. Uh, Town Hall 7 will probably take three to four weeks. Um, but you're looking at you know, tutorial to max Town Hall 7 just casually, hardly, you know, hardly farm and hardly play in. You'll max Town Hall 7 in two months, on, on, under two months. It's so insanely fast. You don't even need to farm up through Town Hall 5 because you get – um, the goblin maps are super easy as long as you can join a clan and get balloons in your clan castle or a baby or a baby dragon. You can beat the first ten goblin maps and the, and that loot's massive. Then you get town hall four and you unlock the practice maps and those start at like a hundred thousand loot, which you know to us is whatever. You know I you know I'll drop a hundred thousand on my own siege machine. It's nothing, but when you're at town hall three, that's your full storage is twice over, uh, and then. Once you get to Town Hall 4, you get the first season pass because you can't buy gold pass until Town Hall 7. But they have, uh, oh, I think I didn't it's, remember. yeah, uh, I think it's just called the season pass. So, from, yeah, it's a little baby from, pass. Yeah, yeah, through four, five, and six. Uh, it's, it's one big long pass. There's no season bank, but it's just a, a challenge that progressively unlock and, and give you points and, and rewards the same as a gold pass would function anyway. Um, and apparently once you go, go to seven, it just gives you all of that stuff anyway. So and there's not a whole lot of great stuff, but it's a, it's a lot of useful loot, uh, especially when you have small storages. Uh, there's one book, uh, a couple gems. Uh, the game's really designed to get you to four builders. Yeah. Um, if you, if you want to spend three bucks and buy the third builder immediately, you can get the fourth builder basically together because it's three bucks for the third builder and 500 gems. And the first 500 gems you earn also come super fast. So you're basically buying two builders with three bucks. It's it's pretty good deal. Nothing I'm a shill. Um, but yeah, it's you hardly have to play to get it through Town Hall 7. And it's so insanely fast. I know I started, I started in 2013. And getting to Town Hall 7 was, was a process. <laughs> it, was, it took a long time. And now it, you can make a new Town Hall 7 alt just in your spare time, not even thinking about it. It's it's cool, but it's not it's not all sunshine and rainbows because the ramp up to the longer upgrade times is a lot more dramatic, and it's 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 it gets real steep real fast. Yeah. Um, so you're okay. you're trucking along through town. You get through you get through seven town halls. You, you can be town hall seven in in a month, and you're like, oh cool, there's fourteen town halls. I'm a seven. That's halfway there, and you're realistically two months into a, a three year journey. <laughs> Uh, and if you're not, if you don't have that gaming mindset of how things ramp up like that exponentially, then it's a real slap in the face. And I think mm-hmm. that's what pushes a lot of the upgrade time complaints that we get is people not, it, it's not just like, oh, you don't know what it was like when I was, when I was a new player, but also that it really does ramp up fast. And yeah, 
and it it gets shocking. But yeah, yeah uh, new uh, new. But you get that gold is, pass, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's the wheels turning. It's designed really well <laughs> to make the gold pass look like an amazing deal because it gives you all the is. loot. It, you you, yeah. you get the books, and all of a sudden, like, yeah, hey, five bucks is you know. And, and I get one of these season passes every month from here on out, plus skins. It it looks like a good deal, and and it I think it objectively is a good deal as much as yeah, you can say it, it objectively. Is. But yeah, um, I, I I think they did a really good job, kind of like you know give just give you a little crack and get you addicted, and then and see how it works out later. Yeah, I missed the conversation earlier on the uh, new scenery and the Easter egg. You know, I got someone's got a, and then you know, I missed all the conversations earlier. But I'm okay yeah. to be the supercell shell here. You know, someone's got to balance out Sam's negative takes on supercell. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just messing with you. Well, so the follow up to that question was, how does that like scale into the late game, or what does that look like in the late game? And I think the answer is, it like gets the long. Pass. Like it gets long. I've noticed that like Town Hall Nine was a slog the first time I went through it, but I was pretty prepared for it because like I've been playing the game for a while. And at this point, if you can get to town hall seven in like two, three weeks and max it out in two or three more weeks, by the time you're town hall nine, that's the first time you're like hit in the gut with the fact that this game is a commitment. (laughs) And uh, yeah, I think that's how it goes into the late game is like at some point it, it turns into like a pretty quick game that you can log on and play and like upgrade at will to you know, this the upgrades take a long time, and there's a whole game to play in between them. Town Hall Nine is also the probably the first town hall where not having your heroes begins to really hurt your performance. Is Town Hall Eight is still just ragged spam? Uh, if you yeah, want so to be. that's actually a good segue into one of our other questions. Uh, cool Morning Six Seven Five Five says, "What's your opinion on the Dragon Lightning spam meta for mid tier leagues?" He says, "Silver and Low Legend." Uh, I'm not entirely sure if leagues have much to do with the spam as much as like the town halls themselves do because i see that all the time at town hall seven and eight even at nine a little bit uh, i don't know if it goes much higher than that but yeah, yeah. Rick, what you, a dragon light seven has always been drag lightnings yeah uh, and, and you can get away with um i think more people do drags and rages at town hall seven now but yeah. I, mean, I don't know uh just because it's easier uh even after the lightning change but town hall seven has always been easy three-star drag spam as long as I played the game since 2013. So I, I can't really complain about that. I hate, I absolutely hate drag spam at Town Hall 8 because it works and it's easy and it's just as easy. And Town Hall 8 used to be, I, I mean, maybe it's just me being nostalgic, but Town Hall 8 is where the game opened up and started to become challenging for me. So dra- you could drag bases, but it took actually identifying those bases and well spelled spell placement and funneling so it was it still took a small amount of skill you could hog most bases and and obviously you still can uh i don't know and then town hall nine drag spam at town hall nine just hurts my heart (laughs) yeah i mean let's go drag spam used to be worse like town 10 um there was a lot of drag spam in there about a year ago but then I think the air defense HP was increased by 10 at Town 10, which uh, meant you can zap the ADs with three lightnings, and that completely killed Dragon Spam at Town 10. Uh, no, so like, it definitely needs to be worse. The the lightning change, uh, people said it, it opened up drags at Town Hall 10, and it didn't, because you could still drag a lot of Town Hall 10 bases with the old lightning spell. But again, it just took base identification you had to use your heroes well you had to have good heroes uh i used to drag that town hall tens all the time uh then they changed the lightning spell and t- drags just were easy mode it was town hall seven all over again you could zap out all four air defenses and it was stupid uh and then th- thankfully they did rebalance that a couple months later they added the 10 hp to air defenses so you couldn't zap out all four you could still zap three so if you can zap three and reach one with your heroes, town hall ten drags are still viable, uh, but people don't do them as much anymore. But anyway, that's my that's my rant. I hate like I I use super dragons all the time in fourteen, but I hate <laughs> dragons at, at every level. I think, I think it goes back to what we were talking about earlier with Russian culture. 
it's the first army you can max if you rush up to get E-Drags. It's just yes. E-Drags, Loons, and a Rage. And you can max those out so fast. And then that'll be the first army you're proficient at. You're just and you're just led into it because you know it's Town Hall Seven is drags, Town Hall Eight is drags, Town Hall Nine people stick with it and it still mostly works. Town Hall Ten you can still drag and you get e drags and those are good for the rest of the game. So it's really and, and I don't I don't understand how people can do that and have fun in this game. Neither. Yeah, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean I think like, that's going to be the most common attack at Town Hall Seven. Yeah, eight. and then like circle back. To that's a hot like take. That. <laughs> like something like yeah but i know something else i said earlier was um w- with it giving advice without context too is when people say just rush like maxing is dumb and but if you're the kind of guy who gets enjoyment from you know hit, hitting that completely maxed out every wall every trap whatever if that's what you enjoy out of the game then awesome that's cool and then max out every level Man, uh, so, and the same right. thing if you're having fun doing drags like have fun you know it's just it's just a game I'll use that to feel better about myself because I've never been much of a spammer, never did the e-drag spam, and now that the Town Hall 14 meta is a super drag spam, I'm having a hard time. So I'll just say that's never been my play style. (laughs) Uh, We've got uh, uh, several more questions. I don't know how long we want to go for, but we'll at least move on to the next one. Um, No Keezy says, what do you think of the Super Bowler? What are its strengths and good armies to use with it? And what are its weaknesses? A lot of super troops in the game. Super Bowler is one of the most recent ones that came out. And it never got a ton of attention. Or at least not that I saw. Not in the same way that like super drags or um, like the high usage utility super troops get. So who's got a a strong opinion on super bowlers? Well, I actually know quite a few people in my clan who have been using them. Uh, Derek, who's also obviously in your clan, you have two accounts. Uh, He's been using super bowlers a lot. And there are also one or two other people who've been using them, uh, Sentinel, Co-Leader uh, Co- as well. And I remember when they came out, people gave them a lot of shit because they were 40 troop space. And I genuinely remember on that post, so many people whining about the troop space and how it was they were too underpowered and they were broken. And you're right, they didn't, they didn't get that hype that Super Dragons did. But... I think they've still got a steady amount of users, and as the most common army, I see most people use, so it's like a smash attack, so you do start with a warden walk usually, uh, and then transition to super bowlers, often tanked by something like a golem, or maybe a pekka, so usually about four super bowlers, I think, and it's very similar to pekka smash, if you've ever done that, you just wipe through the base, range them up, and they can really melt through defences, uh, of course, with disadvantages, they do take a lot of troop space, and if you're sending them through the town hall, uh, especially at town hall team with the g- giga poison, if you, you, you can't, don't you plan can't. it right, it yeah, it they will all die. So often it can be quite neat if you, they can get a bowler bounce over a wall or something, or you're finishing on the town hall when it when it doesn't really matter if a few of your troops die. But yeah, if you're sending them through a core of a base. Don't expect to triple. They will all die. Yeah, I've used them a little bit. I tried to use them for funneling because I thought they would just be OP and their troop space is way too much no. to just <laughs> using them for a funnel. Oh, but yeah, you, no, super you, strong in smash attacks. Uh, I think it takes a little bit of nuance to use them, but if you do want to commit to it and you get the hang of it, I think it'll pay off. It's one of the stronger ground attacks in the current meta. It, it's nothing I'd want to do in Legends constantly, but I I have learned to like identify bases that would be good for it. Like when when you can when you can set a strong word and walk funnel, maybe use a flame flinger, maybe drop a drop a yeti blimp, and you can path them along next to the town hall, but not over it. Then I think you can as long as you can set up a good path for them without putting them in danger. It's it's not a difficult attack, but it just takes you recognizing the base for it. Yeah, and I feel that way about pretty much every ground attack right now is that it's a little bit base dependent but if you find a good base for it it'll be super strong uh but taking it down a couple of town halls uh owl waves asks i've just upgraded to town hall 11 about three weeks ago i still struggle to counter the eagle artillery any tips on how to take it down and man i remember those days where i just wanted to snap my phone in half because the eagle felt way too strong yeah, I mean, taking how to take down the eagle is quite a general question. 
because it completely depends on your attack strategy. But you've also got to remember there are there are kind of ways to mitigate the eagle, even if you can't take it down. For example, if you're doing a drag, say you're doing e drags, very common attack at eleven. If you have your king down, he will likely tank the eagle shots for you. So if you're using your king alongside your e-drags, he will likely tank it for you. And while the eagle isn't dead, he's not really harming your army that much. So it's less the case of how you take it out, because whatever army you use, you're going to either want to target it. You probably want to target early if you can, if your plan allows. But if you can't, Use something to tank it, like the king, because he is a great tank for eagle shots. No, so I, I disagree with saying it depends on the attack. I think every single attack deals with it the exact same way. First is that your warden ability doesn't have to do anything at Town Hall 11. Like for 12, 13, and 14, you have to use it over the Town Hall no matter what. But at 11, you get to use it pretty much over the first round of the eagle artillery. And then you just focus it first, no matter what. If it's in the middle of the base, you get a clan mate to donate you a blimp, and then you take it out with the blimp if you can. Um, but I think every single attack, you just have to prioritize the eagle, because if you don't, I think it's seldom that you'll get a triple at Town Hall 11. But it's been a little yeah, while since I've That's a good like, point. That's a good point. Like, if, if, you want, if you want an easy recipe for Town Hall 11 three stars, uh, three golems, ten witches, eight bowlers, I think that should fill your camps. And you do... Eight, qu- uh, eight, eight lightnings, two quakes, and a rage. And then you do a CC log launcher with uh, some bowlers in it. You uh, zap quake out two infernos, and you just aim that log launcher uh, at the town hall across the eagle and spam everything. There's not like there's not a town hall 11 base that won't take. Town hall 11 is stupid boring. I, I hate it. You can yeah. zap quake. It, you just zap quake witch fam damn near every base there is. If you can grab extra value with with zapping out the infernos it's it's not even a challenge so maybe if, i just get town hall 11 on hard mode but i just uh i queen walk every time and i try and get the eagle down queen walk and then i do hogs for the rest of it and that feels like it it yeah. needs a player to execute it <laughs> yeah no <laughs> i know super- like I, I i tell myself all the time i do five i, I do uh five versus fives with a lot of my small accounts i do like 12 11 10 9 8 uh, and I tell myself, like, I'm going to have time. I'm going to do some, do some hybrids and do some fun attacks. And then I forget about a war and I'm like, okay, it's time to do a bunch of zap quake, witch spam stuff. And it works at 12 and 11 and, uh, 10 is a little more open. I, I try and do electron or whatever, but like, you can zap out the inferno at 11 and then witch spam is stupid easy. Um, but d- but don't do that because spam is lame. Learn how to learn how to hybrid because it'll be better for you. It'll be much better for you at, at twelve and thirteen. Yeah, but ultimately, if you're having a hard time with the eagle, focus the eagle and then make sure that you're using your warden ability over the first or second volley because if it does kill your army, you know you're done. So uh, we'll get one more question and then one last one on our way out the door. Um, but kind of as a follow-up to a discussion we were having a minute ago, Squilliam says, any tips on building a clan Discord server? Um, and if you guys have any experience with that, feel free to speak to it. I know I built uh, the Discord for my clan family. It's had uh, you know up to four clans in it at one time. We've got maybe 30 roles, you know, close to 50 different channels on it. Uh, it's been around for, for a long time. My biggest piece of advice is just make it today and then make it mandatory for your clan. <laughs> and like you'll figure everything else out it took me years of like self-taught you know finding friends who are discord managers of other you know servers and seeing how i could build it out figuring out what roles are figuring out how to make channels and accessibility and it'll just get better over time uh, so it'll be super basic at first the longer you do it the more advanced it can get the more bots that you can get in ask for help make friends along the way it's all cool uh, uh, our Discord server, I know the, the the subreddit one that's in the sidebar, they have templates you can copy if you want to just have a good start. How do you how do you get a template? I've never heard of that before. Yeah, if you go into the info tab on the r slash cash clans Discord, there is hashtag server templates, and as you can view templates, you can create a server with it. It's it's pretty neat. 
and they've got some pre-set up ones for uh, clans yeah, and clan yeah, alliances. There's, yeah, there's like a war clan one and there's other stuff. So if you really uh, don't know what you're doing, it's it's a good place to start. Just ask in the chat and there's 14,000 people who will be willing to help you. That's crazy. That sounds really cool. Well, we've got one last question. We're way over time. Um, but it says, this is a podcast. Where do I listen? Also, what's your favorite defense? So uh, all of us, when we're doing our shout outs on the way out, say what your favorite defense is. But I'll throw it over to Rick to tell you where you can listen to this later if you want to. So, yeah, uh, um, we use Anchor and Anchor automatically pushes it out to a bunch of places. Uh, the big ones, almost everyone is going to have either Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. The, the, those three definitely. You can also get it on Pocket Casts if that's your thing. If you want it somewhere else, uh, there's probably five or six more places we can start to add it. So let us know. Uh, it's only going to take about five minutes of, of our time to do it. But Apple, Spotify, Google, I'll, I'll have it. it it'll be out. Uh, we record Fridays. I normally try and get them. Uh, pushed out through uh, Saturday morning to Sunday morning, just depending on what's going on. And also, we have a podcast index in the sidebar. Uh, you can also, if you after you get your Discord server set up, create a channel called Podcasts, and then go subscribe to the Podium server. And there's a whole network of Clash podcasts. There's probably a dozen of them. There's more. There's another one. There's an esports one that I got to add to that. Um, but yeah, it'll it'll everyone, uh, all the class podcasts that get published will it'll push straight to your Discord server too. Rock on! Shout outs, favorite defense. Uh, I Clan Castle. It's not a true defense, but it's the, <laughs> it's the most. Vers- oh man, it, it it's the best. <laughs> like um, I was, I was I'm I've been going through early game again. Clan Castle is the best offense and defense you have through the early game for the first year of your life, and then it's the most versatile and the most tricky thing you can do outside of traps that's, well, that's me. Mine, uh, my favorite defense is the tornado trap so oh i hate yeah, you that's that's the tricky <laughs> one that's the controversial statement <laughs> <laughs> like if if i would have known if me and davis would know each other in real life we probably would have gotten into a fist fight over tornado traps at one point oh i remember that argument yeah, Sam. honestly, my, my favorite defense is probably the Builder Huts because they're something quite different. Not only do they attack, they also repair your base. They may not be the most effective, but I think it's a cool concept. And, yeah. Man, well, I'm pretty basic. I like the Wizard Towers. Purple's my favorite color. Uh. <laughs> uh. All right. Um, so, any shout-outs that we have on the way out the door? Sam? Oh, uh, well. I think I've got, well, I've got a few. There's uh, one that was planned and one that isn't planned. So firstly, shout out to you slash average underscore user 25 for asking, can we not let British people talk? I agree. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, as for myself. It, you I, know, muted like, <laughs> <laughs> I muted him. Uh, oh, that was you? Oh, you yeah, should have told me. Weird. You should not have told me. I have the power to meet other people. Oh no, I'm so gone. Um, oh. As for my second shout out, um, <clears throat> I think this weekend is the beginning of the Queso Cup, uh, and then there'll be further rounds to follow. I'm sure Supercell will happily be promoting the finals, as this is the first community event which will be offering a golden ticket for worlds. So we're hopefully going to do some stuff on the sub for that, whether it's just make a post, maybe run some predictions, see if we could do some sort of giveaway. Honestly, I'm just spitballing. That might not happen, probably won't happen, but definitely want to do something. And yeah, I'm quite excited to see that unravel. Rick, what about you? Any shout outs? Uh, I'll say happy birthday to Catfish. Uh, I know I talk about that dude probably every week. Uh, <laughs> like, a little man, like a little man crush. Uh, He's the host of the Clashing and Traffic podcast. It's one of my favorite ones. I know he just had uh, his birthday and his podcast birthday uh, hitting a year old. Uh, so happy birthday, man. Mac, what about you? Shout out to that little goblin that caught me snooping earlier today in the corner of the village there. <laughs> and uh, shout out to all of our listeners. That's all that I've got. So we'll go ahead and uh, 
start to log out and the show. But thanks so much for listening, and we'll catch you in two weeks. Cheers. Hopefully, with yeah. hopefully with an update to talk about. Oh, yeah, was cool. <laughs> or at least a sneak peeks. I'll take anything. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Yeah. Good night.